In this video, I'm going to show you the top five ways I found to generate Gridfinity models for free. And the last one is really amazing, so be sure to stick around for that one. Now, when I started with Gridfinity, I used to search for the exact model that I needed, but it was hard to find exactly what I needed and also very time consuming to do the search. So I found that it's much easier to just generate exactly what you need. So let's have a look at how you can do exactly that. This is the perplexing labs generator. It runs in the browser, so it's very easy to use. I will put the link in the description. You just input the number of rows and columns you want. And it also has options for magnets. Select here, magnet holes, for example. And once you have that, you get the holes. And it also has options for sub bins. So you can put in maybe two here, and then you get sub bins. And you also get the scoops and the labels in this one. And once you're done, you can just hit the download button and you will get the STL file for this model. If you are using Fusion 360, you definitely want to check out this plugin. It is called Gridfinity Generator and you can download it for free on the Autodesk App Store. I will put the exact link in the description. I was using this a lot myself before I found the other options that I will show later. Just hit download and you will get setup file. Once you have done the setup, you can start Fusion 360. Once you have opened Fusion 360, you want to go to the create menu. And at the bottom, you will find Gridfinity bin and Gridfinity base plate. Let's try the bin. Then you get options on the right hand side. There's a help page on GitHub, which is very useful if you want to get into the details. Then you can select the basic sizes, which should be the standard ones. And you get the XYZ. Let's go for a three by two by five sized bin. Then you get some options for the body. You can make it hollow, shelled or solid. Hollow is the normal one. Shelled is also called echo sometimes. It's where it doesn't use as much plastic. And solid, you may use that if you want to make a cutout for a tool or something like that. Then we have the compartments. Let's go for four by two. And you can also make a custom grid if you want to here. Then you can add a scoop or disable the scoop if you don't want it. Same for the labels. You can add labels or you can disable that. And then you have options for magnets and screws. And once you're set with all the options, you hit OK. And it will generate the uh, model. And as you can see, it takes a bit of time here. So that's one of the drawbacks here. It's, it's quite slow. Even if you have a decent computer, it uh, will take a while to work with this setup. And as you can see, it did this group here with the 140 features. So there's uh, quite a lot going on here to generate the model. Another drawback is that you can't go back and edit the model. You need to regenerate it. The big advantage of course now is that you can go ahead and customize this in any way you want using all the regular tools in Fusion 360. The next tool we're going to look at is a web-based one. It's located at gridfinitygenerator.com and it is a commercial project, so you can purchase a plan here. But there's also a free option, and actually you don't even need to create an account. You can just go directly in here and select one of these. Let's select create a box. And you get the regular options for XYZ size. You can also have a custom size. You can have magnets. And screw holes and thin lips. And you can also add elements down here. So there's three types of elements. Let's start with a wall. And this is just a divider. So you get sub bins. Let's put it over here. You can either move it with these tools here or you can enter the exact values over here. And apply the change. Let's add another wall. And let's move it over here maybe. Another element you can add is a ledge, and this is for the labels. So you can move it over here maybe. Let's actually move this wall further back and move the ledge over here. And then the final element you can add is a scoop. And let's move it here and we want to flip it like this 
And once you're satisfied with the box, you can export it to an SDL file over here. Now let's say I want to make a box with a cutout for the screwdriver here. And this tool actually you can do that directly. You can also do it in the CAD tools of course, it's quite easy to do. This is a common screwdriver, so you can find the 3D model online. Let's look at it here. And in order to do that, you select this cutout part here. And then you need to set the size. So for this one we will go with x1, y4. And then you import the 3D model of the screwdriver here. Once it's imported, you can move it around like this and put it into a position where you want the cutout to be. And then you can just export the model as usual. The next tool we are going to look at is a plugin for FreeCAD. And although I do most of my 3D modeling in Fusion 360, when it comes to generating Gridfinity beams, I've actually switched to FreeCAD. And I will tell you why in a little bit. To install the plugin in FreeCAD, simply go to the Tools menu, Add-on Manager, and search for Gridfinity. I already have this installed, so I will go ahead and close this here. But once you have it installed, go to File, New, and then look for the Gridfinity Workbench. My UI is a bit customized here. I think in the standard UI you have a drop down with workbenches, but just find the one called Gridfinity, select that, and then you should get a toolbar with options to create Gridfinity bins and base plates. So let's try the Gridfinity parts bin here. And you saw how fast that generated. This is one of the reasons why I like this plugin over the Fusion 360 It's much much faster and I can go here select part bin and I can customize XYZ for example let's go for three here and two dividers and you see how fast it updates so that is really nice and now when I've done this I can go back here and I can customize even more and this is the other reason I like this over the Fusion 360 one because once you have generated there, you cannot go back. But here is possible. I can go back and change again. Another thing that is interesting here is that you can set the labels to be in different styles. And one style that I use sometimes is the overhang style. And with this, you get less plastic here, which uh, gives you more room inside the bin. Also, if you remove the scope, you will maximize the available space inside the bin without having to remove the possibility to have labels. And once you are done here, you can just export it to an STL file. Now the last tool here I think is really amazing because it can generate things that none of the other tools can. Just to give an example, it can automatically generate this type of battery holder. This is actually an open SCAD library called Gridfinity Extended. However, you don't need to know anything about open SCAD to use it. Just head over to Make a World, and here you will find the Gridfinity Extended with a customization tool that you can use. So just press the customize button, and here we have a lot of options. So just to give an example, let's go for the item holder here. Hit customize and then we get into this screen and here we have an item holder and there are lots of options to customize it so let's go for the battery AA cells and let's turn off this and generate now we have a small battery holder let's make it a bit larger so we will go to general cup and here we can set the width let's set it to three and the depth Let's set it to 3 and we want it to be stackable so let's extend the height to 8 and now it's larger but it's still not stackable and this was a bit confusing for me from the beginning but what you have to do is go to the item holder item layout and here there's an option for item holder auto bin height just turn that off and regenerate and now you get the sides here also. 
So just with a few clicks, you have now created a Gridfinity stackable battery holder. You can go ahead and download the file. So there you have the top five ways I have found to automatically generate Gridfinity models. I hope you found the video interesting and if you did, please leave it a like and consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one.